The Buds are back in business, and Big Poppy is leading the charge. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On at Least podcast, a Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co host, Dave Morasuti. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. So if you plan on trying to grab some last minute tickets to the game on Thursday to see if the Maple Leafs can take a 2 1 series lead, uh, use the promo code Locked On NHL and get yourself 20 bucks off those tickets by using the game time app uh that's right dave they can go and try and take the lead in game three because the leafs won game two uh that's more like it uh <laughs> that is definitely more like it uh at least come from behind they beat the bruins three to two in regulation uh in game two they lead boston with the split and it's now a best of five series and the leafs have home ice advantage how are you feeling after that game? Well, I just want to make one correction because he did do the promo. It is Wednesday, the game, not Thursday. Oh, so, my bad. is it? It is. Yeah, it's. I, it caught me. It caught me by surprise too. By it's because there's gonna be a day, two days in between the oh, sorry. And Saturday game. The Saturday game was three days after the Saturday yeah. game. My bad. My bad. But. I'm I'm pretty feeling pretty good. <laughs> I mean, the I, I I was gonna try to like bring my heart pressure monitor just to show what my heart pressure was like, but I mean it's also been a little bit of time since the end of the game, so things have calmed down a little bit. A little but bit, the, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a night. Let's just say. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like, I think the Leafs, a lot of it is they were just patient, right? They stuck to the game, and we talked about that last time. If they just, you know, keep keep working at their craft, eventually they'll get a bounce or two to go their way or something will open up, and uh, they'll be able to capitalize. And that's essentially what happened, you know? It was, a, it was a pretty solid game. I think Toronto played fairly well once again, um, but ultimately there was one man who stood above the rest, and he was the difference maker. It was Austin Matthews. Like, that was a statement – playoff esque get on my back boys i'm not losing this game led the charge uh he was fantastic tonight dave absolutely a mutant like pull up this tweet here from uh from uh jeff Fayette uh on twitter just to show how dominant he was but not just himself but how many categories that he led in this game so yes he scored the game winning goal Beautiful play by Domi, by the way. Flip play. He catches it midair, and he puts it on the ground, makes a beautiful deke, scores. Awesome Sally. You know, put the buds in front, and uh, and they were able to hang on. So got the game-winning goal. He had the primary assist on both of the other goals. So he was the, the, the lone play driver tonight. Uh, all three goals came off the stick of, uh, Austin Matthews at one point or another with two primary assists and the goal. He had 12 shot attempts, eight of them reaching on net. Uh, he had six hits tonight. He was 70% in the faceoff draw. Uh, he had a 54% Corsi rating, 66% expected goals, and generated 75% of the scoring chances while he was out there on the ice tonight against his opposition. Uh, dominant. Dominant performance from Austin Matthews. Of those stats, too, Dave, uh, he led the team and led the game in assists, points, shots, shot attempts, tied for the team lead in hits, and then also had the best faceoff percentage in the game. He was by far the number one player tonight and the biggest reason for why the Maple Leafs are taking a split back to Toronto. You know, it stands to reason why having your best players being your best players is usually a good sign that yeah. you're going to come away with the victory. And for all the people who I saw the tweets right after the Leafs lost and Florida had beat Tampa, I saw the tweets. Oh, look what happens when the big boys show up for the team to get the win. Austin Matthews took that personally. <laughs> Let's just say 
because he he again you list all those stats off it's not just the offensive stats it's the hits it's yeah. the blocks it's the face-offs who was out there in the last minute of the game mike to help uh, protect the lead mitch marner and Austin you Matthews. Were, you no, were oh, you, oh, you yeah. were looking for you were looking for Austin Matthews. I, I was looking for Austin Matthews. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, Austin Matthews. David Camp also really good play for David Camp to mm. kind of kill kill the end of the game. But yes, Matthews is also out there uh, doing his thing. Yes, he was doing his thing. Like <laughs> usually, again, we are, but we're seeing a lot of David Camp. We are seeing a lot of Marner. But to me, when Austin Matthews was out there, that was a sign from Sheldon Keith saying you earned it. You're the guy I trust the most to be out there. Yep. Just such a, I was one thing we didn't really talk about a lot after the game one loss. And one thing I forgot to bring up was how I wasn't happy that the Leafs were being outworked in the faceoff circle because mm-hmm. that's usually their bread and butter. That I think was such a big change from tonight. And Matthews led the charge in that department because this is a team that needs possession. Yeah. When you lose faceoffs, you generally don't get possession. And what the Leafs did tonight was we are going to be keeping the puck. Notice one other change that had, that they did tonight, Mike, not just the face off dots. I saw a little less of that dump and chase garbage from game one. <laughs> so when they had the puck and they went for a change or they were trying to get things started again, they didn't dump the puck. They reversed it back, kept possession kept the puck away from the the Bruins, made the Bruins work a little more for their offensive chances to get the puck back. Yeah. And lo and behold, it w- I thought this was a much cleaner game. Yeah, we saw a lot of good things in the last game 5 on 5. But to me, this is this was ex- this was such a master craft in terms of Sheldon Keefe understanding the adjustments that need to be made yeah. and the Leafs going with that game plan and working it to perfection. Or as close yeah. to perfection as you can get. Yeah, I, 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 I think that it definitely it was like situational where, you know, if it was your second, third line, you know, lines that aren't the greatest four checkers, and they, they, you know, they knew that they're like, all right, let's let's not dump and chase and four check because we we aren't having success there. But if it was the fourth line, you know. Yeah, let's dump in and let's chase in after it. And Dewar's got some speed. He could be first man in on the puck. And Revo can get in there, bang bodies and, and jar puck loose. And so we saw both both happen, which is, I, I think, um, what you need, right? You, you play to your strengths, right? Certain lines can go out there and bang and, and they can go out and forecheck hard. And some lines, you're not like, you're not going to get a great forecheck out of Nick Robertson. You just, you just know you're not right. Pontus Holmberg. Yeah. It's not there, but those guys are better off kind of handling the puck and, and, you know, that's their way of, uh, of, of making a difference. Um, when it comes to Austin Matthews though, to, to go back to the dominant game that he had for me, like, obviously we, we all know how amazing he was with the puck, but, you know, defensively, too, we didn't even touch on the play, possibly a game saving play like they had a three two lead and that puck was loose in the crease. Didn't know where it was. Austin Matthews spotted it. And Samson, was like turned around in his crease had no clue what was going on, where the puck was. And Matthews just pins it inside Samsonov's pad, eventually got the whistle i'm not sure what took so long to get a whistle there there's no way that the refs knew where the puck was but anyways uh luckily samsonov stood still and matthews pinned the puck there and and just you know stood his ground as well just a smart play and that's him making sure that he's protecting the net front and doing what he can do to to, to keep pucks out of the net so and, and at that point it was like austin he he austin matthews is not losing that game like he 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 at one point, flip the switch, and we've waited for Matthews to flip a switch. It's it, mm-hmm. it's something that we've seen all the great players do at at some point, and tonight was one of those games where he, in the third period, just kind of flipped the switch, and he was like, "All right, that's it. I'm taking over here." And he did scored the game winning goal, beautiful play uh, by by Domi, and an even better finish 
by Austin Matthews. And then Samsonov, I thought, was excellent to kind of shut things down. He allowed two goals in the first period and then put up a clean sheet from uh, there on out. A couple massive, massive saves throughout the game as well. A big-time bounce back for Ilya Samsonov. Let's take a quick break. Let's come back. Let's get into the three stars. I'm sure both of those guys will be featured in it so we can break down uh, Sammy's game a little bit more. There's still some things to clean up, so we'll get to that as well. And speaking of Big Poppy, big night for Austin Matthews. On the other side, I'll tell you guys how you can win yourself an Austin Matthews jersey, courtesy of your friends here at the Lockdown Lease Podcast. So don't go anywhere. I'll share the uh, information of how to win that next. You're listening to the Lockdown Lease Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now the authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from receipt, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. It's true, Dave. I did this a couple of weeks ago, went and saw myself at Jay's game. I grabbed tickets that morning, 15 rows from home plate. 30 bucks, $30 all in, no hidden fees, no nothing. That's the best part about game time. And I knew exactly what my view was going to look like too uh, with their view from the seats. They've got flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing and the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on NHL. Get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti with you. We are your hosts here on the Locked On Lease podcast program. Uh, we do have episodes that come out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. That's five shows a week here on the Locked On Lease podcast. And speaking of five, we just hit a big time milestone. Thanks to all you listeners and viewers. We crossed the five K subscriber mark on YouTube. And with that, we said we were going to be doing a giveaway and uh, well, that happened uh, last week. So we're giving away an Austin Matthews Jersey to one of you lucky 5,000 subscribers. Uh, so down below in the show notes, in the show notes down below on this video, there's going to be a link and uh, follow the link. And there's a bit of just a, a form for you to fill out a submission form with all your basic information uh, so we can get a hold of the winner. And uh, eventually, we are going to pick a winner uh, randomly selected. Uh, I think we're going to let people probably go through the, the whole first round. Is that what, what we're doing? We're going to close the missions after the first round? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll do it to the first round. Um, and then, obviously, we got to eventually get this jersey out to the person. Hopefully, this will get to them by the time the Leafs are further along in the playoffs and this is something hopefully, that could be worn. hopefully it's while they're still in the playoffs that's what we're hoping for yeah. and then this jersey could be worn on a long prosperous playoff run but i tell you if poppy plays the way he did uh tonight that very well very well could be the case uh so yeah make sure go check out in the show notes down below uh, if you're listening to this um it it should also be there uh, if you're listening to it on uh, whichever audio platform you use, but make sure that you are subscribed to the Locked On Lease podcast on um, on YouTube in order to uh, be eligible for the giveaway. All right, with that, Dave, let's continue breaking down the game two victory, three to two Maple Leafs with a win over the Boston. Bruins, the series now tied up at one game apiece. And as we do after every single Leafs victory here on the show, uh, on the podcast, we go through our three stars of the game. So let's start with the third star, Dave. Who did you have as the third star tonight? I had Tyler Bertuzzi. Yep. Almost took him off because of that slashing penalty that he took late in the game. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you have, can we give a round of applause? Best actor, Brad Marchand. Dude, dude, like how he doesn't get a diving call on. Man hold, held his knee as if like he got shot in the knee. Like it was. Ridiculous. He got tapped on the back of the like the lower. Like I don't it know what part. Like, the tap. Tap. A little oh love tap. God. And Buddy buckled like he got shot with a bazooka. It was in, 
anyways, yeah, they were yeah. called the team was aren't they the big bad Bruins? No, they, they're Brad Marchand look pretty they're, big and bad over there, huh? Yeah, they're, they're, they're the big Ooh. bad babies now. Anyway, oh the Boston, oh I loved also when the Bruins fans were complaining when the Leafs were throwing hits. I was like, yeah. oh, did the Boston fans not like the hit being thrown? I I had a buddy over watching the game. He got a kick out of that. Yeah. So I I what I also liked about Tyler Bertuzzi. I'm gonna one more off the uh well after I after play extracurricular stuff after the game. Marshawn was trying to yap. Bertuzzi oh, yeah. wasn't even letting him have it. That's what Tyler Bertuzzi is here for. Not mm-hmm. just for the you know little stuff after the whistle, but also because he's a pretty good hockey player. He is a pretty good hockey player. I thought he had an excellent game tonight. That whole line was yeah. uh, was pretty great. Um, you know, I th- he almost he technically did score a goal. It got wiped off because it was a, it was a high stake, and I knew right away that that was coming back. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't even bother did. cheering for it. I'm like, yeah, me that's either. Not I, mean, I was surprised, like listening to to CC and Craig Simpson. Like they it, they didn't really mention it until like kind of far after that this goal could be coming back. Yeah, they were. It, it was kind of bizarre. I'm like. I don't think that's going to stand. Uh, no. And then eventually, of course, it did end up getting blown dead. Uh, the yarn crock goal, too, that was our non-goal review. Another kind of a weird, uh, weird situation there. Um, but yeah, back to, to Tyler Bertuzzi. Yeah, man, like he was really, really solid. He's so good at winning board battles, too. Like he's just a guy who's going to go into the corner. Like he was brought in to be, to be what he is, to be honest. Like he is coming as advertised and, uh, almost scored a goal. I mean, technically did, but you know, almost got credited with a goal mm-hmm. uh, tonight. But you know, he's uh, he's definitely coming as advertised. He had a solid game. I gave my third star to his line mate, Max Domi, is who I ended up giving my third star to because he actually did score yeah. a goal, uh, went to the net, and ended up scoring on a on a nice little rebound. And then also, I mean, a beautiful assist on the game winner, just a little alley oop pass or. Uh, I think Craig Simpson said it actually. It was almost like it was a post play that they ran. Just a little, you know, pitch it, caught it midair. Austin Matthews catches it midair and then kind of takes off with it, throws it down and makes a beautiful move uh, and then puts it up shelf to uh, to ice the game. But a great, great play by by Max Domi just to, to realize, hey, this could potentially work. Um, and it did beautifully. So uh, for that reason and... Max Domi needed to come into tonight's game and he needed to stay disciplined. He did. Yes. He stayed disciplined tonight. He didn't cross any lines and take any stupid penalties. And, uh, and he was still, you know, effective. And that's when Max Domi is going to be at his best. So I, you know, props to, to Domi for being able to toe the line and, and unlike last game, stay on the right side of the line here, still be a pest to be a factor uh, offensively between whistles and all that stuff and not take penalties. So Domi gets my third star. Yeah, no, he was great. You know, I was, I was actually debating putting both of them together. I, I did thought, too, to be honest, we probably should, right? have, but, but we did a good, we did the split. We are giving we both of them their cookies. I'd imagine yeah. the, the 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 first and second star probably not going to be a split this time. Uh, no. Second star, Dave. Uh, that would be one Ilya Samsonov. Yeah, yeah, big Sammy. He again. We there was all. There's always going to be questions about if Samsonov can do it. You saw all the stats. Like literally going into this game, they were showing all the Samsonov's recent stats, like zero and three in his last few starts. How his playoff record hadn't been good. Never and the ruins in the playoffs. Yeah. And he he made some big saves tonight. He that did. one on Marshawn, I Massive. thought that was going in. Massive stop on uh, on Marshawn. He had one more too where I was like, "Oh, let's go, Sammy." Like that was that was huge, especially since like the Leafs were 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 down like basically, you know, most of the second period. And then it was, it was a tight game the whole way, right? Like it, they could not afford to have uh, to, to, to not get some big saves. Yeah. The big one on Marshawn. And I thought I, I wrote down another big one that he was able to get um, in the first period. Uh, yeah. But a couple of massive saves for, for Eli Samson. I've stopped 27 to 28 uh, tonight. He was big for them and he had to be the mm-hmm. uh, you know the Boston Bruins are a tough team 
They, they're a tough team and they're a good team and you need to have good, good goaltending. You need to get a couple extra saves uh, in the night. And I thought that uh, Sam Snov gave you that extra couple saves. So certainly uh, pleased with Sammy's job tonight uh, out there. I'm just checking to see what is expected. Yeah, it was like 0.51 um, goal saved above expectation. So played above expectation also uh, in terms of the underlying numbers. So Sammy, Big night, big night for him. Uh, but obviously, the number one star for tonight was Big Poppy, number 34, Austin Matthews. Uh, just uh, a terrific night. I mean, from start to finish, pillar to post, he was the best player on the ice all night long. Uh, he factored in all three of the Maple Leafs goals with the game-winning goal, obviously, but also uh, you know, had the primary assist on both of the other goals. Uh, he led the team with 23 minutes uh, of ice time, 23-24 of ice time, 67% expected goals. He went 12 for 6 in the faceoff dot. Uh, he had eight individual scoring chances. We talked about the hits. He had uh, a, a team high six hits tonight um, away from the puck, won some big-time board battles, really used his size and strength and IQ to win pucks uh, all night long, keep those waves of pressure in the offensive end so that that whole line could prosper um, just was excellent tonight. Really, really was. And uh, if Bertuzzi hadn't of batted in that goal, I'm pretty sure Matthews whose stick was below the, uh, the bar probably would have batted it in himself because he was right there and he was tracking that puck too. So maybe even, you know, could have had another goal tonight. Uh, the one that, that got disallowed by Tyler Bertuzzi, but either way, man, Austin Matthews, uh, a massive, massive night. So then, you know, the defensive play to pin the puck against, you know, uh, yeah. Samsonov's pad at the end there to, to make sure that they hold the three, two lead instead of allowing a loose puck end up getting, uh, you know, deposited into the back of the net. How many times have we seen those backbreakers here in Toronto where it seems mm -hmm. like you're finally getting some momentum and then just, you know, a loose puck in the crease and the change gets deposited into the back of the net. Uh, but like I said, Matthews was not allowing that to happen, and he made sure, nope, this puck is is getting blown dead. This this bad boy's getting blown dead for sure. And, uh, yeah, he was he was a monster tonight, an absolute monster. He was a monster, and the Bruins really had no way of containing him. That, that to me, was the encouraging sign, right? Now, it, I, I think also Matthews, there's another level he can get to, right? Like, he was great, but I think we always know that there's more to him, right? Especially with the goal scoring. He was distributing more, which I was a little surprised about. Um, but the chances on the ice, I think this is the big one here. High danger chances with Matthews on the ice, eight. High danger chances against two. Yeah, there you like go. Like that—that's just clear. That's he the was, quality, right? Yes. Uh, the quality is being produced. Exactly. Seventy-five percent of the chances are uh, are going the Leafs' way when Matthews uh, is out on the ice. And look, the thing is, he did this on the road, where it's always going to be tougher. The tougher matchups now, the series shifts home. I think this is where Austin Matthews can really get unlocked. Yeah, gonna... especially if especially if Andrew Peak's not able to play because he did leave the game with injury, yeah. didn't return, and he was playing on the third pair. And now it's like, all right, someone else is gonna have to 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 fill. And I think maybe Patrick Watherspoon, I think, is is their seventh defenseman right now. Could be someone else, but I believe that is their seventh uh, seventh D man. And, you know, this is a chance now Sheldon Keefe gets last change. So he can pick on the third pair if they get caught out there on an icing or if they get caught, uh, you know, out there and, and all of a sudden Matthews ends up coming over the boards. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Coming home now, the advantage was with Toronto and they've got three of the five games left playing at Scotiabank Arena. If it goes seven, I guess, because uh, when you take a split at home, or you take a split on the road to start. When you come back home, it's a five-game series, and you got home ice advantage with three of the possible five games in your own building. So Toronto was able to do that with a win tonight. Big time, uh, big time dub for the Leafs. Like it was near win. Like season saving might be a tad hyperbolic, but it was definitely uh, a near win game, and they got it done. 
And now it's good vibes heading back to Toronto for game number three. A um, couple things to, to maybe clean up, though, from the game, I would say. It wasn't perfect. There are still a couple of things. Why don't we get to that on the other side? And then where's Willie at? Let's discuss what, what's what's going on with William Nylander and uh, maybe if we'll see him in game three or not. So we'll get to that on the other side. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Lockdown Lease Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every Game right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Today's show is also brought to you by Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with a financial safety net starting today. Uh, with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage, with some options offering same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies, and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you through it. Uh, your work life insurance may not offer enough protection for your family's needs, or even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. Policy Genius gives you an unbiased advice from a licensed expert support team they have no incentive to recommend one insurer over the other so you can trust their guidance thousands of five-star reviews on google and trust pilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with policy genius head to policygenius.com slash locked on nhl or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save that's policygenius.com slash locked on nhl Welcome back into the Locked On At Least podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Just a reminder, we are a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast. You can find us on whichever streaming platform you use for the audio cast. Even we can also be found up on YouTube as well. Just hit subscribe and uh, make sure that you get that content each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. It's all Leafs all the time. And look, we're in much better spirits today than we were yesterday coming off of the game one loss. Obviously, after a victory, we're feeling a little more optimistic about a long playoff run. So you are going to be want to uh, going to want to be a part of the run with the Lockdown Leafs family. And hey, the discord was popping off again, Dave, popping off all day, uh, pregame, during the game, post game. So we'll have the link in the description below also to join the discord link, the discord family. It's a lot of fun uh, chatting with everybody inside, uh, you know, that that little chat room, the discord that we got there. So you can jo uh, join that as well. All right, Dave. Um, so before we completely close the book, I suppose, on game two, there were a couple of things that I still think the Leafs will need to clean up going into game number three. And we'll do more of a game three breakdown uh, uh, probably tomorrow's show. Um, but in terms of what they could potentially clean up here, Dave, is is there something that sticks out to you? Uh, for me, I, I think there's there's two things, really, and then you can give me yours because I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit. Um, I, I still want to see a bit more from Mitch Marner. You know, I, I was kind of – I don't know. How, how did you feel Marner played tonight? I didn't like it at all. So neither did I, but then I don't know if you heard the post game from Sheldon Keefe. He was glowing about Mitch Marner tonight and more so about his defensive play, which fair enough. He has okay. done a pretty good job keeping that uh, that Pasternak mm -hmm. line in check. Him and John Tavares have done a pretty good job of, of keeping them at bay uh, at five on five. I know Pasternak scored a power play goal tonight, uh, but at you know, keeping them, you know. Oh, it wasn't a power play goal. That was the one that was like right before the end of the period. Anyways, besides mm -hmm. that one moment i guess for mitch marner uh regardless i was not a big fan of his game either because of that blown coverage play and, and also on the power play goal uh, on the penalty kill also blue coverage again i'm not sure why we saw sheldon keith like having glowing remarks about 
Marner. I, I don't really get it. I don't either. Like I was watching him and I said, like, I can't watch him right now. Like it's tough. Yeah. The way the plays he's making with the puck. I like there was the power play earlier in the game, or actually it was maybe later in the game, where he has the puck below the net. And instead of passing the JT's in the slot. So instead of mm-hmm. passing it to JT in the slot, Marner decides to hold it, take it up along the boards, shoot it, and it gets blocked. Oh, yeah, right into the feet, right into the knee. And he was oh, doing yeah. that multiple times, and I'm like, Mitch, like, what are we doing here? You're the yeah. distributor. Funnel it inside, Mitchie. Funnel it inside. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like his game uh, much either, which is why I was kind of surprised to hear Sheldon like, say that he liked the game because Twitter was was all over Marner. Like, yeah. calling him invisible. The, the guy the took clips his- on, like, there's video clips, Keith, of people, and, like, they're the expected goals. You saw the expected goals with the Marner to Vars Nyes line. It's 2.9%. Really? I did not see that. Hold on. I'm going to pull that up right now. I got I got to write. I have a queued up. I got to write. You got it natural. Okay, perfect. Yeah, pull this up for me. I, oh, my God. That was through the entire game, or was that at, like, a certain point? It was, like, I think it was just before Marner got moved with Matthews. Okay, so that was at a certain point in the game. I'll see what they finished at, but I doubt it was much better because I they, they didn't play well to me. 12%. But, it finished at 12%. Uh, oh, according to natural stat trick, that is. Um, oh, wait. That's not good. Yeah. That's not good. Like, no, it's, it's, no. like to me, there was they didn't a, generate a with... single and generate a single high danger chance all night long. They gave no. up four. Matthew and I also took a beating tonight from yeah, a lot did. of birds players. Um, to me, the issue I've had with Marner, especially in this series, he's been a perimeter player. Yeah. Too much of yeah. a perimeter player. And there was a play where he has a chance to go for a puck in the offensive zone, skating around the boards. Took the Instead of going way. for the puck, Took the he went way. around. He went on the other. He passes the puck and go, like because he sees a hit coming. Yeah, that's not good. That's to me. That's not what I expect. Matthews take. He makes that hit. He gets engaged and he's making the play. We're seeing the clear difference right now between what Matthews is doing as a playoff performer. And Mitch. And look, last year, Mitch against the Lightning was really good. Mitch like, against the Lightning put up points. Yes. But I recall thinking to myself, there was he's more racking up points, but he's still not dominating. And yeah. I it's it's still happening. And now he's not even putting up points. I think he is trying to not hurt his confidence because I guarantee Maybe. he knows. Maybe, but I mean, you're a grown man in the yeah. NHL. Making, He's making almost $11 million. I don't 11. need you to coddle this guy. Right, exactly. Like, you need to be fair and you need to tell him, just like you said, you know, he called out Max Domi how many times in the post game presser in game one, calling yeah. it a, you know, immature and, and, and said that it was an extremely undisciplined, stupid, dumb penalty. Well, you know, call out Mitch Marner in the media too. Go out there and say Marner needs to play better. Right, like Marner has an extra. Marner has another level to get to. Uh, we need to. We need him to get there if we're going to win this series, especially going home. Hopefully that helps. Boom, could have said that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm glad we're on the same page with Marner because I was yeah. a little perplexed at uh, at Keith's comments there. I but anyways, so yes. Um, besides that, though, uh, still a couple of undisciplined penalties. Like we we mm-hmm. noted the the Bertuzzi one whatever the 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 little love tap or uh, can i ask an, another one on the love tap he, i went back and there was a tweet about it too he taps the right leg look at which leg he goes and grabs Marshawn. it was the left oh, leg wow. he goes to grab that's funny so i don't know so there was like the, the, i am expecting a fine for Ma- Marshawn for diving because that's possibly but what i will say and this is this is like because this is what kind of end up happening with Michael Bunting in the second half or in the second year of his career or in the back half of the second half um, and where he's at with his reputation with the, with the refs. And, you know, maybe now next time Marner or Marshawn doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. So he used mm. his, his chit there. Yeah. And now it's like, well, you cried wolf too many times. Now we're just, you know, not gonna, not gonna call it. Maybe, I don't know. 
could be wrong, but perhaps that that could be the case. Uh, but yeah, Bertuzzi um, and, and Labushkin, that was on the same play. Like just um, can't be getting into those. And also McCabe right at the beginning of the game, so, the, the cross check. So just a really that. just a dumb penalty, and it ended for up for no reason. Why? Them. Like, why? Why are you doing that? It's not like the Bruins. The Bruins didn't start it either. That's the part that really the Bruins do a little tap. Like they there know a, the there Bruins... was a bit. There was a, a a tiny little little tap of the pads on Sam, on Samsonov. Nothing that really, maybe a little shove, but not a whole two hand full weight just lumberjack boof right to the back of the of the the broom player i can't remember who was a, a, at this moment but but now um, we know why they know now you know why they're doing it because they know they're going to get a reaction apparently apparently but uh certainly you know mccabe's got to learn from that because you can't be taking those penalties especially with the way that this team you know hasn't done a great job killing off penalties you know again even tonight i think uh what did they end up killing off tonight couple I think they were one for one for three, I think, uh, on the PK, mm-hmm. one for two. So that was the one that they didn't kill off. Um, but they killed so, off the one that matters. Yeah. So certainly they, they improved the discipline, only had to – they took a couple of penalties, but then obviously with some four-on-four four play with matching penalties, they only ended up being shorthanded twice. The one, the McCabe one, resulted in a goal. They killed off the, uh, the Bertuzzi one, luckily. Um, but still – Let's clean it up. Let's keep things tight, clean between the whistles as much as possible. Other than that, I thought it was a pretty good game for uh, for the Maple Leafs. Could work a little out a little bit better on the breakout. I, I think there still was, you know, times where there was a lull where they were having the troubles, you know, getting through the neutral zone and into the Bruins uh, Bruins area. But hopefully, the return of William Nylander can help with that come Thursday. Wednesday, sorry, right. Wednesday. Will he or won't he play in game three, Dave? What is going on with William Nylander? Yeah, so obviously we talked about the update yesterday that he apparently tweaked something, woke up, and wasn't right. They tried to get him right, and they couldn't for game one. Game two, you see him, on, you know, and he was on the ice Sunday. He's on the ice for morning skate. I knew he wasn't going to play. The moment I knew was when he wasn't in power play rushes. Yes. Sometimes line rushes are one thing. Power play ones, I'm like, yeah, no. And I think power we- play, and then he stayed behind with the projected scratches as yeah. well with Timmons and Brody, and yeah, yeah. And and Luke Fox kind of mentioned this in his column that he believes he saw Nylander with some sort of brace on his back. Like additional back support under his sweater. Interesting. Interesting. So maybe, yeah, back injury. Oh, this is, I mean, it's not great, obviously. No. Uh, Will is one of this team's best players. He was, uh, I mean, you could make the argument he was their second best player this season. Uh, so for him to be out for an extended period of time, uh, not good. I know he's day-to-day right now. Tried to, to give it a go. In game two, obviously was uh, was was unable to go. Uh, perhaps a couple more days off, rest. Maybe he'll be good to go for game three uh, on home ice. And and I know that he'll get a, a massive massive ovation if he is good to go. I would I would think um, on uh, on Wednesday because that'd be a big boost, big boost, big addition mm-hmm. to uh, to to the lineup because. You know, I, I I think that you even look at the lines and how things got distributed tonight, and it was like, oh, you didn't see a whole lot of play out of that third line, right? Like, no. Holmberg even Yonker and, had took some shifts in, on the fourth line just to get him out there. Yeah, like Hol- Holmberg and, and Nick Robertson, who almost scored, actually. Unbelievable save there by by, uh, by Olmark. Why not? Um, but outside of that one play, didn't do a whole lot and weren't, uh, you know, weren't out there. A whole lot and i think it's just because you know it comes down to to trust in these tight games not sure there's enough built up trust from those guys particularly in their own end and uh you know if you bring in guys like willie guys like bobby mcmahon eventually you know you're gonna push guys back into 
positions where they should be. And then maybe Nye shifts back into the third line along with yarn crock. And, and, you know, whether it's Willie or it's McMahon on that line, however, they decide to do it. Um, you know, just continuing to, to add in superstar talent in Willie, but also slot guys down and, and build out more of that forward depth uh, is, is going to be key for Toronto. If they can get that done uh, sooner rather than later in this series. Uh, all right, Dave, we'll leave it there. Uh, we'll reconvene for uh, for tomorrow's podcast. Mm-hmm. Without it for us here today on the show, I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at the underscore Morris Sudi and follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow to help tee up game three between the Maple Leafs and the Bruins. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.